This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion whole test, current and future configurations. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. We now have the first incarnation of the air to ground radar in the F-16C. We have two modes. Now I want to show you this in use in an actual mission because that's where it will be useful. So here's our F-16, we're about 40 miles off the coast near Sukumi. Sukumi is an enemy base and has some enemy bombers that we want to bomb. The problem is the clouds have moved in and there is zero visibility. So we can't use our teapot and we can't use our eyes. We need to use the radar to first of all find this base and then find these aircraft and bomb purely out of interest. We've got a big ship moving as well. First, air to ground mode, the easiest way of getting to the air to ground radar. The air to ground radar defaults on the left screen. Let's first pause the aircraft so we're no longer moving and go over the basic symbology, starting from top left. Which mode do we want to use? Ground mapping, which is what we're using at the moment ground moving target for moving vehicles currently not implemented sea mode which is very similar to ground mapping but optimized for the sea beacon which will not be implemented or standby if we want to silence the radar and we can click there if we want to go back in so back to ground mapping regarding the level of zoom do we want it automatic or do we want it manual if it's manual then we can click here to change the range down the bottom is zero range, up there is 40, 20, 10, and so on. If we have it on auto, then it will range automatically depending on the position of our cursor, which is here. Norm, this is a function that we'll use to get more detail and we'll come back to that one. Override silences the radar temporarily. Control, this gives us a series of controls with the radar. These will be used with GMT, ground moving target and we'll come back to those on another video. Barrow currently doesn't do anything. Freeze. To do this we'll unpause so that we're moving in a realistic scenario. So here we go you can see everything updating. If I want to freeze exactly what's on the screen at the moment so I can study it in more detail I can press freeze like that. It's modal so if I want to go back to normal scan like that. We're currently not in snowplow mode, and that means we can move our cursor about with RDR cursor up, down, left and right, or the equivalent axis. To do that, we need to ensure that this screen is soy, center of interest, currently not soy, so press DMS down. DMS down, it is now soy. We can move the cursor about, as you can see there. If we were to put the radar in snowplow mode, it will lock the TDC in front of us to a certain position and we can no longer slew the TDC around. One good reason for doing this is if we actually lose the TDC off the radar somewhere, we can press snowplow to bring it back here. To turn snowplow off, it's modal, so we can just do that, or we can use TMS up. CZ, cursor zero. This will move our cursor to our currently selected steer point, steer point one, there. It's now moved to steer point one there. STP, currently not implemented. Here is our time to go until we reach our currently selected steer point or our SPI, our sensor point of interest, which is essentially our target. Declutter, I'm just going to pause it again now so we've got more time to speak. Declutter doesn't do anything at the moment. Test, we'll run a bit test. FLCS is a different page. FCR, we're already on via control radar. Swap, we'll swap to another page. This blue thing here is our steering cue. We'll use that later on. This thing here can either be the bearing and the range from the aircraft bullseye to us or it can be the bearing and the range from us to our current speed or target as we'll see soon. EGM, we have two different modes, EGM or RBM. RBM is a less detailed scan but faster, you can see the refresh rate is faster. EGM is a higher detail but a slower refresh rate so it depends which you prefer to use. Next, the azimuth of our radar antenna is shown at the bottom with this guy zipping along here. We can change it from 60 degrees left, 60 degrees right to 30 left, 30 right, or 10 left, 10 right. Obviously, the smaller the number, the quicker the refresh rate, just like the air-to-air -air radar. I like working in 30 degrees. This guy here shows the current elevation of our radar antenna, and usually it will be aimed down a few degrees. Range markers, quarter, half, three quarters of whatever our maximum range scale is in nautical miles. And finally, our attitude indicator, which is this little blue guy here, so we can see if we're rolling or whatnot. 
Next, just a quick reminder of how the radar works. It obviously fires out electromagnetism that bounces off things and it comes back to our receiver. The strength of the signal is shown by a color. The brighter the color, the more reflective the thing that the EM has bounced off of. So C does not reflect EM, so the C is black. This is the C. A ship reflects EM and so the ship shows as bright. That little guy there is a ship. Other bright things may include houses, telegraph poles, cars, buses and infrastructure like that. General terrain will come back with a kind of middle colour like you've got here and a radar shadow i.e. behind a mountain will also obviously not reflect so you will have shadows here behind a mountain here. That's the symbology explained. Now let's go and find the airport. All we know is that the airport is within 10 miles from our steer point and our steer point is here. So let's go searching. We're going to use our EXP and DBS modes to get a bit more detail. So I'm going to slew my cursor over to roughly around this peninsula here where I think the airfield may be. I'm going to press here to get an EXP, an expanded mode. Mm, that's okay. The main problem with that is I can see an area in the middle called a notch directly in front of our nose where for very complicated reasons the radar just can't see. If I wanted to eradicate that notch over this peninsula I would simply turn the aircraft either to the left or to the right so that this notch area was away from the peninsula. As it stands at this moment I think we can probably just about get away with it. The level of detail is pretty bad, not happy with it so we're going to go to DBS. Doppler beam sharpening level 1. That's okay but I want a bit more detail. How about Doppler beam sharpening 2? And that is the last mode we've got to use. The more detailed the Doppler beam sharpening, then the slower the refresh rate. We've got a nasty slow refresh rate at the moment. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't see an airfield. So we've got to start messing around with the various visual effects. And this is something you will have to do and something the real pilot will have to do. So let's whack the gain up. OK, and this is starting to help now. Symbology is too bright. Take the symbology down. Contrast, bring it up. Brightness, bring it up a bit more gain. Now the runway that I'm going to look for is not going to be reflective therefore I'm going to be looking for a black strip. I sort of see a black strip there, I don't know if you can see that. So let's go and get some more details of that black strip. I am going to freeze the current image. Note that we get the current lat long of where the cursor position is in three digit minutes. I want to have a closer look at what I think might be the runway here. I'm going to unfreeze to allow the refreshing to happen again. It's now refreshed. Now I want to zoom in. So, manual, zoom in to 20. Everything takes a while, so just be patient. Okay, that is 100% a runway, I think. Let's just punch around with the gain a bit more. There we go, look at that. This is something you'll always have to do depending on conditions. So that is clearly Sukumi runway there. There is the apron. There is the uh, small runway bit there. There is the tower and the hangars and stuff like that. Let's go in even further. Here is our detail. Target hangars you can see around here nice and reflective targets aeroplanes you can see these hot spots here next I want to freeze the image image frozen I'm now going to select a target so I'm going to move my cursor over to a target in this case I'm going to get that guy there because I know from uh, setting up the mission that that is an illusion next TMS up to create a speed sensor point of interest and a target speed set notes that the navigation has gone from bullseye and it's changed so that now from us to the speed is 0 0.15 degrees magnetic for 19.6 nautical miles next i need to set my weapons up because i forgot all about that power on three i want that right we're pretty much set up to go now i need to steer to the target we could use our hard symbology or we could use our steering queue here this is telling us to turn left let's turn left in fact why don't we fly the whole mission with a steering queue just to show that we can do it. Ah, here's an interesting one. That there is our own ship marker. It was showing if this is the top view, which it kind of is, of the airbase through our radar, this is where we are. Currently, we think it's not working or it's just not working when we're frozen. I'm not entirely sure about that at the moment. Using our uh, steering queue and our attitude indicator, get us on target. 14.7 nautical miles to target. When the line is in the middle of the watermark, level out. Level, target on the nose, 13 nautical miles. Let's go to the HUD. 
and we're just going to go through our usual procedure of dropping the bomb now 30 seconds to go 17 seconds to go note the difference between time to target there when our aircraft will get to target and time to drop the weapon there time to maximum release which is when i can drop the weapon make sure master arm is on and it is press and hold weapon release on way hopefully if it hits it's going to show the absolute mega power of the air to ground radar because well there is no other way of doing this maybe apart from having a spy down there or something you watch now the cameras on it will miss <laughs> that was like the coolest friggin thing you've ever seen boom illusions destroyed that is the use of gm and essentially the same for c mode at the moment the next thing to come out will be the ground moving target and we'll look at that when that comes i hope you enjoyed that and see you later